<sighs> Morning butter. Somehow she found a way to get into the hammock just on top of the screen. Another beautiful day in the neighborhood. A little overcast, but uh, beautiful nonetheless. Gotta find those lake trout and uh, find some adventure for day six. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a nice little spot I found. Nice and quiet. I thought I just heard the bell, bell ringing on the fishing pole. Check it. That's probably why the bell is ringing. The kayak swinging around the wind. All right, nothing doing there. Oh, gross. She pooped on the deck and I didn't see it. And now I've tracked it all over. Gonna have to scrub the decks. Lois, it is called the poop deck. That is why I pooped there. You're disgusting. And you're misleading. I'm Zachary Fowler, and you're watching Waterworld 2.0, the seven day survival challenge, Pirate Ship Edition. Holy cow! That was nuts, huh? Lord, keep us safe. Fire the hole, Captain! <laughs> <laughs> it's bigger than the ones yesterday. Oh, nailed it. Between Chris, my first mate, scratch that, Chris quit. It's just me and the animals now. Good morning. Thanks, Butter. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. Could have told me. Hey. Oh, the strap got poop on it. Great. There you go. Here's some breakfast. Have your breakfast. Get the majority of it scraped up. This is all biodegradable, like. Water friendly, ocean friendly, lake friendly, everything friendly, soap. Crazy. There. That should help. Nice little scrubbing. Mm, there's almost a cup. It's a little on the thick side. So they're making a whole new pot. Kind of feel bad. You should have eaten your day one. Now I, I don't know. You did a, you did a good job today, waking me up and stuff. I'll most likely, eat you in the morning. I'm sweaty. Don't eat me. Oh, you like those, don't you? Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> Yummy sprouts. Waterworld 2.0 is brought to you by Four Patriots, the maker of the solar generator I'll be using on this adventure, as well as their three month survival kit. And Solo Stove, making smokeless fire pits and cooking gear that can turn you into a backyard chef. Fabric by Gerber Life. Life insurance made easy right from your phone in 10 minutes or less. And specifically, today's episode is brought to you by Wazoo Survival Gear and Grim Workshop's clever gadgets for survival and adventure. They've been with me from the beginning since I started YouTube, and they're part of my everyday carry and the first items I stocked on Fowler's Makery and Mischief.com. 
I know we teased you with an exciting conclusion to McFowler, but it's not going to happen in this episode. But I will promise we're going to try to get to another McFowler at least quarterly from here on out. So make sure you stay tuned and you can catch those episodes where I sneak those little McFowler shorts in till we can make a full movie version of McFowler's adventures. Like I said though, our sponsors Grimm and Wazoo have been with me the longest of anybody, and they were in some of my earliest videos back six years ago, even before my hair was longer than my beard. And when it comes to the Mac Fowler episodes, you might have noticed in the first one, I had the Wazoo belt and I used a little ceramic knife. There's so many little things inside the belts and gear that I've been using over the years when it comes to just my everyday carry. They never know when I'm going to need to use a hank of that line that comes out of the belt or a little bit of that emergency duct tape. So I'm constantly using things out of it and having to replenish the belt with the new gear. You also might have seen that thing I put around my wrist in the latest McFowler episode that was a Grim Workshop little uh, utility band that holds some of their micro tools like the zipper tools it's not meant to go around your wrist so don't do that it actually squeezed my wrist a little bit much it's meant to be like go around their survival cards and that way you can keep a little bundle of them in your pocket or in your pack during the McFowler episode, I legitimately used the handcuff key for the first time and unlocked myself from the rocket like three times while we were filming that episode. It works really well. Outside of the survival cards and the one that I designed with them, their lock picking cards are my favorite. There's just something so satisfying about picking a lock. You just feel so clever, so MacGyver. One of my other favorites from Grimm is that bottle cordage cutter. That thing works so good and I was able to make some cordage and actually catch fish with it. It was pretty cool. So check out Wazoo for their Viking whetstone necklace and fire starter necklaces or their belts and hats so you can hide clever gear around your person or check out Grimm for their really cool survival cards and some of their fire starters and different gadgets and gizmos. They're always part of my everyday carry and you won't be disappointed if you add them to yours. Check out that link in the description below and let's get on with the video. Hmm. Kind of a foggy, darkish, misty day. I can feel like a light spray of misty, foggy stuff. Sad part is tomorrow's our last day. And it's gonna be pouring. It's gonna be pouring. But that just means it's never boring. All right, dogs fed, chicken rooster there, Mr. Rooster, Mr. Fricassee is taken care of, fed and cleaned. <sighs> I think it's time to feed my soul. Quiet time and some coffee. Looks pretty thick. I wonder if I can shellac that or something, not lose any more of it. Maybe a light layer of uh, epoxy coated into the place. I don't want to lose this. I like it. I don't know if you, if you haven't seen it yet and go back and watch the previous episodes. The link's in the description below because this is day six, right? But um, like I was saying, this, the company here that made these biscuits and kept biscuits in this barrel, they made them from exclusively Sebago Lake water because they thought it was the cleanest, purest water, and that's how they made their biscuits. It's so neat. So, um, if you're just tuning in, and you're like, oh, what in the world is this goofball doing on this thing? Uh, check out that link in the description below, and watch the whole series, the build, and everything. It's so nice right here. The cabin cuts the wind. Because when you're anchored, it just like, it, the wind blows, right? And so you end up blown back from the anchor spot. And uh, you coming up, and and it blocks the wind, and more often than not, and I don't think it's related, but it's just coincidence. The sun ends up being like here, and so this ends up being a shady spot as well. I don't know how that worked out. Maybe it's just this uh, this trip and the angle of this lake, and its prevailing winds, it means that more than often than not, the sun is up there, and this becomes a shady spot right behind here, at least until the sun's way overhead and the late day sun feels kind of good when you're out here, so it's not a big deal. Too cool. And right now, I'm doing my Bible time with my Our Daily Bread. If you're wondering what this is, Our Daily Bread, it's a uh, little devotional book, lit day by day kind of thing. A lot of times I find that uh, when I read this or something like that, maybe it takes me on a trail of verses that takes me around something. But every time I read this and every time I read God's Word, I find that there's something in there, it, you know, because it is the living word and it's, you know, for lack of a better term, magical, where 
you know, and my heart is aching because I'm lonely, and I open it up, and boom, it's exactly what I needed to hear about loneliness. I'm struggling with something, and I open it up, and it's exactly what I needed to hear about the struggle that I'm having, you know. Let's see what today says. Second Timothy 1, 1 through 5. I'm going to sit at my feet, butter. Good girl. Grace, mercy, peace, God the Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy. No matter what our age and background, we have a purpose to tell others about Jesus. My heart aches so much right now. I this build took so much to do. And I had so much passion for it and desire to do this and to share this adventure with you guys and to share as I do YouTube, not just this time, but share my love of Jesus with you and and my passion for adventure and and to encourage and to build up people and then everything that that's gone on behind the scenes with Chris leaving and others in my life and the and the messages that I've been receiving when I'm trying to focus on this and do this and get home to my family. Uh, the the doubters the the concerned people the worried people that are gonna sink the the people that uh, think I went too far and it's too dangerous and I managed to pull it off but the one thing that no matter what comes against in any situation or any heartache or anything is that constant of that love that comes from above from Jesus that and what he says about us that he loves us he died for us what does it say in Psalms where does my help come David said where does my help come from my help comes from the Lord that's where my strength comes from That's why I know that I feel like no matter what I choose to do, I'm invincible until God decides to take me home or otherwise. As long as I am seeking him first, there is nothing that I cannot do with his strength. I mean, outside of stepping in front of a bus to stop a bus like Superman, but then God would just be like, okay, I think it's time to take you home. Kind of being a bonehead. I did not tell you to do that, right? So, if you're looking out there for something stronger, don't go, don't go looking, don't go calling some shady friends. You know, if you're looking for something stronger, look there, and you'll find it. Dear Diary, Did you know they didn't actually use the poop deck for pooping? The name originated from the French word for stern, la poupies, la, well, l-a-p-o-u-p-e, from the Latin word 
pubis, pubies, which looks to me a lot like puppies, but there wasn't any puppies back there. Thus, the poop deck was technically the stern deck of the boat, which was elevated above the stern cabin, which was the poop cabin. Once again, not used for pooping. On sailing ships, the helmsman would steer the craft from the quarter deck, which I guess made it the quarter poop, which was set just forward of and below the poop deck. So if the main purpose of the poop deck and poop cabin were not for pooping, what were they for? The main purpose of the poop was added buoyancy to the aft of the sailing ship and the cabin was used for the ship's master and officers to have their poopy cabin. And even though a name, it was the poop cabin, it was arguably probably one of the nicer places on the ship. Although never thinking of old ships and where in the world the pooping actually happened, at this point, all this talk of poop might be making you wonder where indeed did the actual pooping happen? Turns out all these activities were actually happening at the front of the ship. You would go forward to the head of the ship, hence the name going to the head, and use the facilities below the bowsprit and you proceed to poop directly down the front of the ship and into the sea. The reasoning for it being at the head of the ship and not closer to its namesake was the fact that the ship splashing water onto the bow cleaned the ship after each use, whereas on my ship, the poop cabin actually literally is the poop cabin. What do you say, Butter? You ready for some adventure? Let's get on it. Or should we make some breakfast first? How would you like a little bit of eggs? And bacon? Eggs and bacon? <gasps> eggs and bacon? Eggs and bacon? I'm kind of going for some chicken. Wagyu burger with an egg on it for breakfast burger. Oh yeah, we'll do some wadobo. Wadobo on the burgers really goes well. A little rosemary. huge. No, that's not for you. Down. Get down. Get your chair over there. You come, you come sit next to me. But you stay in your side while I eat. You want a green bean? No? Well, now I can't eat it. You had to lick it instead of you, Goober. Mmm. Mmm. No. Oh, forgot to say grace. Lord, thank you for this food. Help me to catch some lake trout today. Just name. Amen. <laughs> oh, isn't this delicious? This is the rest of that Vermont Wagyu burger that I made for Chris. I still got some steak too. I was planning on eating a whole bunch, but we got out here and we just like 
you know, we're supposed to be doing all kinds of stuff and burning all kinds of calories. We've been doing all kinds of stuff, but it's all like just living and getting used to the whole boat life. It, it took a lot of work, like trying to move, trying to find the spot, just trying to get here to the final spot, grinding hard to catch fish and, and then like taking the time to build one good meal a day. Mmm. Mmm. Little egg, little onion, sprouts. All right, you can have one piece of burger. Without the hot sauce on it there. I know you like that. Probably just looks like a hot mess on camera, but man, is that good. Mm. Amazing. Well, I just right amount for a amount. I was hungry. Not too much. Not too little. Not overly stuffed. I think it's time for a little paddle around the cove since I am all the way around the other side ish top end of the lake. Maybe the uh, situation will be different. Mm. I really wanted to catch something on some of our bass lures, an actual bassin, you know, outside just one on the whopper plopper way back up in the upper lakes. So I think I'll gear up. You ready, buddy? We're gonna go on a little kayak around the lake and come with. So let's see if we can't find that PB. I feel like every one of my adventures I catch a PB. I did catch my personal best crappy, but um, I wanna catch a better bass with one of my dragon craws, you know? Let's go out and do that. When I was editing last week's video and I was tallying up all my fish, I said I had seven different species on the map for this adventure. But in reality, I'm actually up one more than that because I forgot about the yellow perch that I caught while I was in my hammock. So that gives me eight. Unfortunately though, I'm back to seven now because when I was reading the comments, somebody pointed out that that bass that I called the largemouth bass earlier on is actually a smallmouth. And I could see that very clearly now that I look at it, I was just, in the moment, I was like, yeah, I caught a largemouth bass, put that on the chart. No, it wasn't, so I'm back to seven. Here's part of the struggle. Do I, do I go fishing, or, and wash the, or do I wash the dishes now, or do I come back and have to wash them later? I think, I think fishing. I'm out here by myself. Who's gonna, who's gonna look down on me for having dirty dishes in my sink? Why would I want to do dishes? See, that's my whole point. All right, time to rig up. Got nothing's produced all that much just yet, but let's try the floater. Label turned out so good. Go on an adventure? Hop in. Good girl. There. <laughs> Paddle with my fishing pole. Here I uh I have another loss to the sea. The uh kayak paddle's missing. There we go. Oh, we better not lose this one. Looks like really pretty fish territory. There's gotta be something in here. There's gotta be a, a big bass hiding in some of these spots on this lake. No matter how persistent I am, I would have thought there'd be a bass in this that would take a bite, but even when I looked in the clearer waters, it's just 
no very little sign like no sign of uh, any fish outside of little things that I caught last night but I don't know it's a weird place You win. New game? No, I don't want to play another game. You cheated. You calling me a cheater? Not cool, man. Ow. 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 This is pointless. Yep. You're cleaning it up. Lost it now. Time to pull the anchors. Here we go, we're underway. Got a different set of spoony things set up there. Spoony things and another spoony thing there. Both drop riggers ready to go. When I was marking them yesterday, there was a lot of them at 60 feet. So I'm gonna try to go to 100 feet and troll at 60 and then I'll Maybe turn around and go back again and troll at, you know, the same thing. Um, you know, troll at 70, kind of like take it over that same shelf area where I've seen all that sign. I'll just uh, stay around in that area. Uh, and then if I get bored, maybe I'll go, I don't know, go around Fry Island or something. Or, uh, you know, just have plain old, have some fun of it. It looks like we might haul early because there's a lot of bad weather coming. And, uh... No point in just sitting out here in the rain all day and nobody can help me with the hauling on uh, Saturday. So I need my team. So we're going to haul it on Friday and then go to my lake. So that is seven nights. I think I'm going to do one more night on it though down at my lake property with the girls. All the solar panels are making just enough. I got like nine watts left. Each, each, uh, it's a close one. All this rain and overcast, it was just enough to do what I needed to do for this whole adventure, to be able to charge the cameras, um, run the refrigerator. One more day of this overcast and trying to put one more day into it, I would have ran out of juice. If you were to do an actual houseboat, I would say you'd want to build your panels into the houseboat, like the roof, like knowing that you're not walking around on some portion of the roof and have at least 600 watts of solar, but a person who lives in a houseboat too might read more, use just a bit of light during the nighttime, go to sleep when it's nighttime, and you could get away with like a little bit less lights, turning things off more often, and be super efficient with uh, 200 watts of panels. And I'm um, probably boring you guys. Anyways, here we go. Let's uh, let's get those lake trout. Like this video and subscribe and maybe you won't eat me. Wild. There is another side of the lake over there, but you can't, you would never know. You can't see it. Lord bless our fishing. If you see fit to, give us a nice lake trout. I don't care, it could be a little guy, big guy, monster, little, what little, it doesn't matter. We'll take anything for our final catch and cook. So amazing. So amazing. I feel like I'm getting damp. So it looks if I stayed right in the middle of the channel, it could be like 60 feet to, to 100 feet in the middle of the channel. So maybe I should cruise up through here and set some at 50 and then set them down deeper. 
I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do this. Like set one, go up, readjust my course. Set another one, go up and readjust my course. Seems like we're going pretty straight. Let's go for it. And down past the kayak. Darn, lost it. Didn't work. We're in 92 feet. It's down at 55. We just need, uh, I'm gonna get a little bit out here a little further past the ferry area and stuff so they're not in the way. Just coming out now. And uh, they go to right there. So I'm, I'm right in the middle of it. <laughs> Guess we're just out of the way of the ferry. That worked out good. Just get all rigged up and have to change it all. We're fishing. We're fishing on my pirate ship. Oh Lord, won't you give me a fish for dinner? Else I'll have to eat rooster for dinner. Oh Lord, won't you give him a fish for dinner? My friends all have actually junkier food than what I got. <laughs> we got Wagyu. From Vermont Wagyu, and uh, we'll probably have that. I, I'm, I don't know. I'm on the fence about eating the rooster. I don't know if I'm going to eat him. He's been such a nice companion for the ride. You know, he didn't jump ship. Neither did Butter. Right, Butter? 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 Did Butter? Oh. Uh, maybe Butter jump ship too. I don't know. What's the trick to catching lake trout here? Yeah. The, on the left? Yeah. I was jigging for them there yesterday and I saw a ton, but they just weren't hitting, so. You'll see uh, like a lighthouse. I'll turn it on and then come back down up to the lighthouse. All right, cool. I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. And there's just no, we can't find any bass. Cool. Like, there's tons of smallmouth. All you gotta do is find like a rock point, 10 ish feet of water. Really? And you know net rigs? Yeah. Just bounce them through the rocks. Man, there, I have had no luck. Ned rig's a popular rig. It's kind of a small rig, so it works out good if the fish are small, like the smallmouth seem to be in here, as well as big fish and really good for the spring. You basically just take it like I did with the dragon craw earlier, and you're bouncing it along the bottom. Uh, what's your guys' names? I'm Tyler. Tyler. I'm Ian. Ian. Mason. Mason. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah, nice to meet they you. said they brought me some bait. Yeah. You got me some. Let's see if we can do this. All right. Oh, oh. oh no. it's okay. We can recover it, right? You can recover it. All right. Flow. I got one of them. <laughs> oh, there's some pink. Did you guys make these? Yeah, I made them. Oh, there we go. Yes. All right. Oh, those are pretty. Yes. Anything good? Good sized? Because um, everything we've caught so far, bass wise, is just little. That's it. I'd be happy with that. I've had no fight whatsoever the whole time, except for one crappy. I caught a slab. Okay. Nice. All right. Well, thank you guys. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Take care. Thanks. You too. Yeah. All right. I think that's close enough here. I'm going at the right angle. I'm gonna dip in the way the boys said to, following the bottom, and drop it down a little bit. Both of my rigs are right there. Um, reading pretty clear, but if I hit bottom, which I'm looks like I'm about to, it's gonna stink. Oh, this is difficult. Difficult on your own. But maybe uh, those of you that know, we can leave it in the comments below. Uh, what did I do wrong here?
let's find a safe harbor to make our camp for the night. I'm gonna camp out right here on Fry Island. Coming about. Hold on, Mr. Brewster. Hold on, Jim. We're coming about. We're coming about. There. Oh, some fireworks over there. Uh, you can probably barely see it. Fireworks. You can see the oh, even sparks. So close. I felt like I was so close. I felt like I got it figured out a little bit. I don't know about those trolling set up, like if I got the wrong colors, the guy that drove by said, he said white. He said white is the key. And I don't have any white ones. So we're trolling what we have. There was white on one side of the spoon, so it was white and then like orange on the other. So uh, no telling, hard telling, not knowing. If we get up real early tomorrow morning, maybe that's the key. The whole evening troll did not work out. No matter how far, no matter wherever you are, I'm with you. Deep in your heart, my love, I'll stay when I'm away. No matter how far, no matter the way, no matter the pain and heartache, I promise. Pulled up in a little cove that looks really nice. And uh, there's a mooring. I don't know if I'm supposed to be hooking up to it, but I don't have much of a choice right now. It's too dark. I can't tell where I'm going any further. This is where we are for the night. I'll be gone early in the morning and uh, they can send me the, the bill if that's the case. Maybe I'll look it up, take a picture of that and look it up on there. See if you're, uh, it's something that anybody can use or you're supposed to pay a fee for it or what. I can't imagine why they would have moorings out there in little spots that like there's no access to, but outside of like by boat or your property way down the way. Turn off the trolling motor. That thing is awesome. This trolling motor was so perfect for that. I could stand on the bow and operate the boat myself. That was so perfect. Now, uh, let's make some dinner. There you go, buddy. still have to catch my daily fish so I'm not skunked. Even if it is a little thing uh, I have to catch on a worm at the end of every day. <laughs> oh geez, the boat's a little gassy.
Yes. This looks awesome. Nailed it. Just the right amount of pink this time. I always seem to like just overdo it with the Wagyu. It's really, really good. Good in pink and rare, but it's also really good anyway. But I nailed it this time. Oh, thank you, Lord, for this day and the uh, adventure and keeping me safe. And, and just bless this meal in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> oh, this looks like the most beautiful thing I have cooked the entire time I'm out here. Whoops, I guess I didn't cut that all the way through. You get one piece. Up. Oh. Sit. Good girl. Here's. I'll break it up. A little piece there. Thank you. Oh yeah. Here's the rest of it there. Mm. Well, if I can't have lake trout, at least I got. I got this. Mmm. Mmm. Well, I'm gonna finish my meal. And then uh, sit by the fire for a little bit with butter and uh, get to bed so I can get up and try one more time for that lake trout. And then it's time to pack it up. Head home to my family. Can't wait to see them. I miss the girls so much. But at the same time, as much as I miss them, I feel like, oh, uh, if I could just have a day off, you know, and just kind of sit around here and do some reading and stuff and just motor around, look at stuff and then, and then try some more fishing. Like I'd love to keep working on it for another three or four days until I get it down good. And I hope I catch a lake trout tomorrow, but Bedtime. I uh, kind of a crazy day for just a day kind of thing, right? <sighs> oh, I was trying to think of who it was there. Um, the inventor of the light bulb, you know. They said, like, you failed so many times, but like, no, I've just found uh, hundreds of different ways not to do it. We found hundreds of different ways not to catch fish in Sebago Lake. <laughs> and the neighbors are restless, apparently. I had a perfectly quiet cove. Whoever they are, they must have come home from a friend's house or something, so... It won't bother me. I'm gonna sleep. I'm tired. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody. Fowler, out. And don't forget to check out our sponsor for today's video, Grim Workshop and Wazoo Survival Gear. When you're saddling up for your next adventure, get the right gear. Link in the description below.